In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get some grippers working on your Lego Spike Prime robot using Python code. So as you can see in the picture here, and it's a pretty poor quality picture, but you can just see these gripper arms at the front of the robot here. And they can actually be open and closed by simply using a large motor to do so. And that's what we're going to be doing in today's video tutorial. So let's get started now by jumping over to the Lego Education Spike app. And we're going to make ourselves a new project today. We'll just call this Project Gripper. We're going to be using Python code and we're going to click on Create. Now when the Python editor loads up, just go through the usual process of minimizing the knowledge base and console. Deleting any code that is currently in the editor. Zooming in as far as you can go. And then connecting to your robot if you haven't done so. Um, so now it's connected via Bluetooth there, which means I'm all good to go. Now the first thing I'm going to import today from the Spike library are our motor pairs again. So from Spike we are going to import motor pair. We're also going to import the distance sensor once more, so that's the eyes of the robot. And we're also going to import something new, the motor. The motor is what controls the gripper module, or the arms of the robot. So that's why we are importing the motor today. We're also going to import that wait for seconds function from the spike control library. So on the next line, just write from spike.control, import wait for seconds. And if you think back to a few uh, video tutorials ago, the wait for seconds function is used to pause your code for a set number of seconds. Okay, so it just stops everything from running for a little while. Um, so that's all our imports done. The next thing we're going to do is initialize, which just means set up the motors, the eyes, and the gripper. Okay, they're the three things we're looking at today. So let's start with the movement motors like we usually do. So they're the wheels. We give them the name movement motors and we say they are equal to motor pair and just tell the computer which ports both of the movement motors are plugged into. So mine are plugged into A and B. So I've just written in brackets there B and A. They must be written in reverse there so that the robot will move forward when it does move. Uh, once we've got that done we can probably set our default speed like we usually do. So movement motors dot set default speed and I'm going to set it at 50% today. After we set the default speed we can then set up the distance sensor. So we're going to call the distance sensor the eyes today. So the eyes are equal to distance sensor which is plugged into port C. And finally there we've got um, the gripper. So that's our motor basically. So the gripper is equal to motor, which is plugged into port E. And you can see that at the top here as well. So that has initialized everything, our motors, our distance sensor, and our gripper module are all set up. So let's get to coding now and get this working. I'm actually going to do two parts to this video. Um, the first part that I'm going to code up is just showing you how to get the gripper opening and closing. And then the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how we can actually incorporate that into a bigger project. So let's start by, instead of closing the grippers immediately when we run the program, we're going to wait for half a second. So the first function I'm going to call up is the wait for seconds function, and in brackets I'm going to put 0.5. And that will just wait for half a second before actually processing the next line of code, which is going to be accessing the gripper. And we're going to call up a function that I don't think we've used before called run for degrees. So when our motor turns, we can tell it to turn a set number of degrees. And we're going to tell it to turn 80 degrees, which should be enough to close the gripper arms up. As long as they were fully open when you started the program, by spinning the motor 80 degrees, it should close the gripper um, arms up. Um, once they are closed, we're going to wait for, oops, wait for seconds, and then put two in brackets. So we're going to wait for two seconds once we've closed the gripper. 
and then we're going to do a little spin on the spot. So movement motors dot move tank. Remember the move tank function is the one we use to spin on the spot. We just need to tell it how far to move, so we're going to go 10 centimeters first, and then we need to tell how much speed to put on the left motor. So I'm going to put 100% speed on the left motor, and then for the right motor, I'm going to put minus 100 speed, so that'll save me spinning on the spot. He'll just turn 10 centimeters, so he's just going to turn a little bit to face a new direction. And when he's facing in that new direction, we're just going to do gripper dot run four degrees again. And we're just going to do the opposite of what we did before. So we did 80 degrees before to close the gripper. If we do minus 80 now, it should open the gripper. Um, that's the first section of code done. So it is time to test it. So give it a run and just see what happens. Alright, so that worked on mine, no dramas. My little um, robot had his arms closed up, waited for two seconds, spun around, and then reopened them. So that looks good. But what I want to do now is take that a little bit further. Okay, what I'm going to get my robot to do is actually start by spinning around in a circle on the spot. And when it senses an object in its path, it's going to drive over to it, close the grippers up on that object, and then spin around and remove that object from the current area. Okay, so it's basically like cleaning up its area. So what we're going to do is actually delete that little bit of code we just put in at the bottom here. We're going to keep the imports. We're going to keep the bit where we initialize everything. It's just this bottom section I want to delete. We're going to start from scratch again. Okay, so what we're going to do here first of all is get our robot spinning around in a circle very slowly. So movement motors dot start tank. Now we haven't used this function before, start tank. Uh, what he's going to do is he's going to spin slowly. And I'm going to put in the brackets there. 10% for the left motor, minus 10% for the right motor. Okay, so that's the short way to really get the wheels spinning at different speeds and it's going to go pretty slow if he spins around too fast for example at a hundred percent then he's not going to have time to sense an object in front of him but if our robot's spinning nice and slow his eyes will actually have time to spot an object in front of it and that's exactly what we're looking for in this task so when the robot spots something in front of it what we're going to do is and we we'll actually have to sense something first so let's activate our eyes and we're going to use the function called wait for distance closer than okay it's a big function basically this wait for distance closer than we want to be able to look for something that is closer than say 30 centimeters Okay, so when the robot senses something within 30 centimeters, what do we want it to do? Well, we're going to turn the motors on and drive over to it. So movement motors dot start. And that'll just fire him up and get him driving straight at that object. We should probably put in some comments here to explain what's happening. So the first line is just getting the robot to spin slowly in a circle on the spot. The second one is when the robot senses something 30 centimeters away, then we conduct the next line of code, which is driving forward. Okay, so at the moment he's driving forward forever. That's what that start function does. It just gets the robot moving straight ahead and doesn't stop. So we're going to have to tell him to stop when he gets a certain distance from whatever the object is in front of him. So we're going to do another one of the eyes dot wait for distance closer than okay we're going to get the robot to stop about five centimeters away from whatever the object is in front of it okay so i'll put a comment in there that just says when the robot senses something five centimeters away so when there's something five centimeters away from it, that's when we are going to get the robot to stop. So we'll just tell the movement motors to stop. 
that gets your robot to stop moving completely, turns off all the motors. Um, after that, we're going to close our gripper and grab that object. Okay, so we need to do gripper.run four degrees. And we know that about 80 degrees is what we need to close the gripper. And then we're going to wait for a second. Whoops, wait for seconds. And we're going to just wait for one second. So once we've closed our gripper, we're just going to wait for one second. And once we've waited one second, then we're just going to turn on the spot to face a new direction like we did before. So movement motors dot move tank and it's going to be pretty much the same as before so 10 centimeters we're just going to move a bit slower though um, the reason we're moving a bit slower is because these arms that we've got created here aren't overly strong and if we move too quick it's probably just going to drop the object but if we go a bit slower then it has a better chance of hanging on to that object so I'm just going to give each of the motors a 20% speed on the left motor and then minus 20% speed on the right motor. And that should have it spinning fairly slowly. And hopefully it won't drop the object that it's holding. Okay, I'll just press enter a few times so you can see what I'm doing here. So once we have spun to a new direction, the last thing we want to do is just drop the object. So we'll just run that gripper dot run for degrees again and we'll do minus 80 and that should reopen the gripper all right so let's have a look at that code we remember the start bit's all good that's just initializing everything and importing everything we need it's this bottom section we want to look at so the first line of code will get our robot spinning slowly on the spot and it's going to be looking for something. So when it spots an object closer than 30 centimeters away, it's going to start moving towards it. And as it moves towards it, it's going to keep going and keep going until it gets within 5 centimeters of that object. Once it's within 5 centimeters, it's going to completely stop moving. It's then going to close its grippers. It's going to wait for one second and then spin around on the spot or like a split second there so it's facing a new direction and then it's going to open the grippers again to release whatever the object was it was holding okay so that should work uh, we'll just zoom back here so you can see all of that code and make sure you've got the same as me well, let's give it a test run and see if it works Alright, so that worked pretty well for me, so hopefully it did the same for you. That's all I'm going to show you in this video. Um, that's how you can use the large motor to, to control something such as grippers. Uh, but it can control many other contraptions as well, just depends what your creativity you come up with and what you end up making. Alright, so I'll catch you in another video.